boy, where do we even begin? Well, let's begin with I'm Julesy, head smart brown girl in charge and go ahead and thumbs up because whether you like it, love it, or don't agree at all, you're still engaged in a critical dialogue. And that's what we are here for. And subscribe if you new new. <laughs> Button down below, hit the bell for notifications. Last week, Azalea Banks did an interview with The Breakfast Club. About halfway through, DJ Envy asked her about earlier comments she made about Cardi B calling her, and I quote, Did you call Cardi B uh, illiterate, uh, what was it, untalented rat? I did. Why? Now, was this out of nowhere? <sighs> did she start? Out of nowhere, my goodness. No, it's not out of nowhere. <laughs> And thus began a roughly two minute discussion on how Azalea believes that Cardi has privilege most black women don't and it's bringing down IDK, I mean, I guess the movement? Maybe, you know, we generalize basically what she was saying. And hold up, before y'all even get y'all twiddle fingers together to type out the question, who is Azalea Banks? Girl, I see y'all gathering the palm tree leaves to throw some shade here. Azalea is a black woman rapper who is popular in the house music scene. I do like her music a lot. And what I think of Azalea as a person is that she could definitely be rude, nasty, and me as F. But I'm not talking about this interview, but to acknowledge what she's said and done in the past, particularly on Twitter. And her more recent body shaming, like sis. How we talking about black women empowerment though? This is not okay. AZ got her some new titties and was talking about another woman's natural body. I could tell, I could tell sis you love them new bitties. I see, they perky, they send up right, you ain't got wear no bra no more, you <laughs> out here in the streets. But body shaming ain't ever it. And when I look at all the things I don't really agree with Azalea on, I just really want her to understand her platform and what fame now means for her. That talking shit as she's used to with her friends, she gotta keep that in a group chat. There is no being subtle or shady on IG stories or Twitter without people knowing who you talk about and it becoming an even bigger problem when you can't back out of what you said. She apologized for the anti-gay xenophobic statements and coming for Sky Jackson. So the more recent hiccups are generally over things that probably sound good in her head. Well, as I imagine it, they probably sound good in her head, but she doesn't realize until she says it out loud that she's being rude or mean because we we all have these moments maybe not as harsh sure not as frequently as azalea but you know what i'm saying i just feel like we 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 been through it and if you've ever dated a gemini and i've dated one two or three and done a story time about at least one you know a regular a regular occurrence is did you really just say that to me like that really came out your mouth i feel like azalea is a type of friend who really makes you think and you'll tell her personal things because i'm sure talking through complex or like just having like a critical dialogue Dialogue and discussion with her can be fun and interesting and she's not necessarily saying anything unfactual but her blurting out what you told her about other people to the public never helps the situation it's like yo why you have to say that out loud that was between us like I know I said that but I didn't need you to go repeat it like you know like so with regards to her comments on Cardi, where I do take issue is personally, I do not think that being dumb is a voluntary act. Therefore, I do not believe anyone is inherently dumb unless they put effort into being so. It's a conscious effort and everyone has the capability of being intelligent. So the way we express our intelligence varies. Yep, yep. Calling Cardi dumb or illiterate counters Azalea's arguments about the expectations held against identifiably black women versus Cardi because she's referencing Cardi's manner of speech and her grammar. Black women are sidelined for the same things every day. When you take a dig at that, you're setting the bar of intelligence based on white supremacist standards. Not cool. And I do believe this is what triggered Cardi. I was so surprised to see Cardi respond to of all people and all things said about her. This Azalea interview, it just really got under his skin. But in her GQ interview with Katie Weaver, Cardi out loud mentions that she's insecure about the way she pronounces words. And she takes a lot of time in the studio to make sure that she's pronouncing things correctly in her rap. And how, because of that, people perceive her as less than. It is an insecurity of hers. I, I personally, now I personally have a wee wee little bit of internet notoriety. And with that comes people who invest in following me simply because they despise 
despise me and it's wild but most negative things said about me don't really hurt me but whenever someone by chance hits on something that I'm already insecure about no matter how untrue or invalid it is it's like poking a bear when it comes to my feelings you know I be like that Cardi is already insecure about her pronunciation and grammar so Azalea triggered her but I wouldn't necessarily call it bullying because I've seen Azalea bully and that's two minutes of that interview that that, that was not it mm -mm. centering this conversation around an individual versus a system is unfair and while yes Cardi has privilege she doesn't deserve to have this put on her back Cardi is successful yeah by nature of being herself and an entire system of people responding to that by giving her a chance and putting her on from us as an audience and fans to the male dominated urban music industry this is the same issue i took with the bruno mars and cultural appropriation conversation centering racial inequalities around the person who themselves is not the bigot allows the system and structures that uphold this to go unchecked like even look at how azalea's comments became this bigger fallout shows these same systems and structures at play with how quickly this became simply nothing more than a Cardi versus Azalea thing and fans just having too much fun attacking both sides. We never get to the actual conversation. Cardi herself for the most part is not offensive and on some levels I believe that she is aware of her privilege. Azalea ain't bitter but they both likely ran up against the same music execs and I promise you the way AZ as a dark skinned black woman was talked to versus Cardi was likely vastly different and as someone who formed worked in the industry girl let me tell you something as basic as how I wore my hair when I wore my natural hair out the way men would talk down and degrade me versus if I was done up like this and presented a certain way no it's still not respectful at the end of the day because they sexualize you there's a lot of patriarchy and misogyny that exists in the industry but the way that you can navigate that and kind of say all right I know that these men ain't ish I'm sure people came at Cardi sideways but consider how quick we are to call dark-skinned women bitter angry dirty nasty and someone more racially ambiguous is usually chided as too pretty or too cute to be like that. If Azalea could just be more compassionate, I think her points would be read as much more salient because I don't believe that an identifiably black woman could get away with what Cardi B does. CC Fantasia Barino, CC the young girl who was a friend of Trayvon Martin's that testified during that George Zimmerman trial. You know, the jokes that were made about Fantasia's literacy and the way she talked, the comments that were made about that young girl and her pattern of speech and the way she dressed and the way she looked and her being too hood when she got up there and testified against Zimmerman. The closest thing we have to like a Cardi is maybe Tiffany Pollard, New York from Flavor of Love. And I think the, the major difference is that Cardi is respected and often held as empowering. You know, they both get memed, I guess, but like, I think we look to Cardi as like a genuine celebrity and talent and we look to Tiffany as like more of like a B-list like reality star even though technically aren't they the same but who do we respect more and I mean okay there's Tiffany Haddish but even with her I see so much pushback and respectability politics pushed on to her most black women who act similarly are not getting label or even production company support and don't let this black woman have the nerve to be someone's fourth baby mama because we societally are not calling that relationship goals, promoting a gang without being severely chastised, publicly out loud acknowledging that they do not write their raps but they still well know how we would and how we actually do drag black women for the same sort of sins that we say oh I love Cardi for? I'm not or at least I'm trying not to putting all of this on Cardi well I mean the gang thing yeah sis we need you we need to call you out on that but I want us to consider the role that we play in this and the need to check the label execs who keep the light skin privilege in the music industry churning I really want to make a comment about Georgia but uh you know that that this that's not necessary it's not what that about mm -mm, yeah girl don't do it do this as a whole separate video it'll be up later this week actually but to quickly address is Cardi B black. I always say I don't need her to be because then we have to, as we are complicatedly now, have this conversation about the privilege she encompasses. Because folks usually wanna tag her as black to say she's uplifting or empowering black women and I'm like, Yes. That's not front. Like we like we love or respect black women like this when they have a bit more color, a bit more kink, or a bit more nostrils. But really, 
I don't wanna have this argument because the power of language is not on our side. I don't want the comments to delve into whether or not we perceive Cardi B as black or not on this video, okay? Race is a tricky, messy thing in the American context. And think about how unified we could be if we had the language to discuss the nuances of our racial identity in this imperialistic system. Bruh. So the conversations around ethnic diversity and black people not being monolithic, race as a social construct, phenotyping, colorism, light skin privilege, and a phobia, we don't have the language to productively discuss in a far reaching and truly impactful way. So when any of these conversations are sparked with the general masses, they quickly devolve into divisive attacks. Even with this argument that Azalea brought about, it highlights how the power of language suits white supremacy. Because the white man sets the standard for the words we deem as intellectual. And you know, am I making sense here? The long and the short of it is, Cardi B has a privilege. We don't necessarily have the language to term that privilege, but she has a privilege that is really extended to identify we black women. The privilege, though, is not her fault. Azalea referencing Beyonce and Solange was an interesting hot take. Uh, I don't know that that really stuck with the larger point she was trying to make, um, but it was interesting nonetheless. We, we do negatively chastise black women for being too hood, for not speaking right, for being baby mamas, for being members of gangs, for not being educated, and not the first wife. We definitely don't respect them, follow them, or make stars of them. So I'm not trying to throw this, and I don't want you to throw this in Cardi's face though, because we are the same ones who made her a star. Okay, hot take, hot take. That wraps up all that I have for this critical dialogue. And I know you are gonna click right here to watch some more of my videos cause we can keep this conversation going. And uh, hopefully I'll have the link up for the next couple days after this video goes up for the Cardi B is black video. All right. Deuces.